T lymphocytes move through tissues using an amoeboid like mechanism that relies in part on the formation of membrane blebs at the cell's leading edge. In 2009, Max Crummel and colleagues at the University of California, San Francisco, found that this bleb based motility is regulated by the septin family of GTP binding proteins, which assemble into a variety of complex cytoskeletal structures. We had found septins on the surface of T cells, and when we knocked them down, the cells would throw out all kinds of extra membrane in perpendicular directions to their motion, as if they were not controlling their cortex very well. And a net result for this physiologically is that the cells just don't locomote very well. So we realized that there was some really critical function for this collection of molecules in helping cells keep their shop in order as they move. To investigate how septins might control the lymphocyte cortex, Crummel and colleagues, led by graduate student Julia Gilden, looked at the localization of septins in migrating T cells. We were not only finding septins assembled along the cortex in the back sort of constricted uropod of migrating lymphocytes, but they're actually also transiently forming where the cell is blebbing and forming protrusions at the front. Similarly, though septins are concentrated at the cleavage furrow of dividing T cells, they can also be found all over the cell cortex and mitotic cells lacking septins showed more blebbing of their polar membranes than wild-type T-cells did. Septins are therefore enriched at regions of cortical instability. But, says Crummel, there were two potential explanations for how septins prevent excessive membrane blebbing. Were the septins stopping excess protrusions and blebs and things from being formed in the first place, or were they taking small forms of those and helping the cell to recapture them? Are the septins basically statically involved as a sort of a cortical mesh keeping the membrane in order, or do they respond to some sort of cue and say, okay, now, now we want to retract that material? To answer this question, Gilden et al. used an osmotic swelling assay. Cells are put into a hypotonic media, which causes them to swell. And from our perspective, that is basically forming one big bleb where the cell membrane swells outwards away from the cortex. And then using flow cytometry, you can ask how big the cell gets and then how long it takes it to recapture that membrane that's been spewed out in response to the hypotonic stress. Cells lacking septin swell to the same extent as control cells in hypotonic media, but they took longer to return to their normal size indicating that septins are involved in retracting membrane extensions rather than in preventing them from occurring in the first place. What uh, Julia then did was to do that same swelling response and look to see how septins assembled and what they did. And she found these individual septin rings forming all over the membrane as the cell retracted. And it's clearly quite dramatic. The cells sort of invaginate a little bit and right around the invagination where they're pulling membrane back in, you see these accumulations of septin. Osmotically challenged cells rely on ion channels to return to their normal size. Gilden et al. found that septin rings still formed at the cortex when membrane retraction was blocked using ion channel inhibitors. So their recognition of this expanded membrane happens even when the membrane's not ever going to be pulled back in. So that allows us to put a mechanism on what they're doing, that they're re responding to a cell that's overextended its membrane. To sort of first grab onto the membrane, as we've seen those rings form, and maybe be a, an axis for which you can pull everything back in. The response of septins to membrane extension may be coordinated with the actomyosin cytoskeleton, which interacts with septins and is known to be involved in bleb retraction. You can mimic the hypotonic stress phenotype by simply depolymerizing cells actin uh, using latrunculin. So that's one thing that we learn. The other thing is that the inability to retract membranes that we see in septin depletions is, as it were, phenocopied by loss of either actin or myosin. And so that gives you at least the hint that those are all three in the same pathway to pull the membrane back in. Live imaging revealed that both actin and septins localized to membrane protrusions in hypotonic conditions, with actin appearing first before septins accumulated as the membrane retracted back into shape. Indeed, using flow cytometry, Gilden et al. found that osmotically stressed T cells took longer to restore their membranes to a normal topography in the absence of septin filaments. The hypotonic swelling assay is a very nice surrogate for membrane expansion and in the need to retract it. But what, what actually is happening when cells are crawling? So 
Julia took advantage both of looking at normal cells and also looking at cells that are treated with a dynamin inhibitor. Normal cells will bleb as they crawl. Dynamin inhibitors make those blebs happen much more often. If you look at the septin-6 GFP, you'll find a lot more of it showing up at the front blebby surface of the cells when cells are undergoing that kind of blebbing crawling. So at septins are assembling at these sites of motion, and in fact, their assembly there correlates with how much of the blebbing-based motility they're undertaking. Moreover, just like in the membrane protrusions induced by hypertonic media, actin accumulated in the blebs of crawling T-cells shortly before septins were recruited to retract the membrane. The basic model that we're proposing here is that receptins are essentially in some way recognizing stretched membrane. Whether you stretch it by the hypotonic mechanism that we purposely did or whether it's stretched in response to a bleb that forms during motility, the septins are recognizing stretched membrane and assembling on it and forming a scaffolding by which the actomyosin cytoskeleton can pull that membrane back in. So what do Crommel and colleagues want to investigate next? Well, essentially what we're trying to do at this moment is to generate a mouse in which we can knock out septins in primary leukocytes. And the basic questions that are, that are coming out of that are ones of, will the cells enter into inflamed tissues as well? Will they actually permeate into normal tissues, you know, better or worse than their normal counterparts? And I think at some point the question has to be asked is how septins are actually regulated you want, in some cases, to be able to expand your membrane into new domains, so at some point you don't want septins to be retracting it. And whether that's because septins do or don't assemble on the surface or whether the actomyosin complexes don't pull on them, uh, we don't know at this point. But those are the sorts of questions that are sort of leading forward as we try to understand better how cells permeate through tissues. In the meantime, you can learn more about how septins help to attract membrane blebs in the paper by Gilden et al., published in the January 9th, 2012 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.